This is my daughter, Feather. Because of my influence and guidance, she was inspired to become a lawyer. This is my father, Harry. I hired him as an investigator for my law firm to keep him out of trouble. Out of trouble. At least as a lawyer, I can keep him out of jail. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your next senator, Will Redmond. Hey, you're supposed to be smiling like the average candidate's wife. He's a fraud, Feather. Everything he says is a lie. What are you talking about? He'll do anything to win, anything. Oh, Julie, all you've got are the old campaign trail blues. No, Feather, he's... He's changed. He's really changed. You have no idea. I, uh, I want to talk to you as a friend and a lawyer. Well, sure. Go ahead. Not now, but I need your help. I want a divorce. Oh, boy. You're sure you've thought this out? I've been thinking about it for quite a while. Do you suppose you could hold some time off in front of me on Monday morning? Of course. It's going to be a long weekend. I guess I was expecting this. I'm very sorry. So am I. Can you wait until after the primary? Oh, it'll be okay then. Right now, it might hurt your chances, huh? That's not what I'm talking about. The nomination is a lock. Once I have it, we can spend more time together. I know I've been neglecting you. That isn't it, Will. I don't want to be on your team anymore. You changed the rules, and I don't like them. Can't we at least talk about this? We are talking about it. No. No, I mean, Will... Go up to the cabin. I'll cancel my appointments. We'll spend the weekend. We'll see if that construction crew has started. It won't work. Julie? Come on. Please? The cabin's always worked for us, hasn't it? No, nothing for me. This is a celebration, isn't it? A glass of wine. All right. This is 
Tony Dapp. I'm not home right now, but I'll return your phone call as soon as possible. Leave your name and number as soon as you hear the beep. Feather, this is Julie. Will and I are going together up to our cabin at Lake Pachuma. I may not be back until late Monday. Please hold some time Monday afternoon. <laughs> You know when it really ended? When you made your deal with Lassiter. I need Lassiter. That man represents everything you told those people you were opposed to. If they knew that you had his support, they I'm would I'm running never... against three strong men. I don't have their money. Poor, poor Will, you got so hungry. Well, now I'm thirsty. Second honeymoon. Your boyfriend should see you like this. What makes you think they haven't? Please, don't shock me. What are you doing? I am looking for an apartment of my own, with a bathroom of my own. It's all yours. And just in time, too. <laughs> I won't be long. Your politician friend is on TV tonight. Don't want to miss that. Oh, yeah? Since when have you been interested in politics? Not politics, honey. Politicians. They make us professional con men look like amateurs. Feather, this is Julie. Will and I are going together up to our cabin at Lake Pachuma. I may not be back until late Monday. Please hold some time Monday afternoon. My special guest tonight is Congressman Will Redmond. The congressman is something of a political wonderkin. Pleasure to meet you, Congressman. Well, thank you, Dirk. Pleasure to be here tonight. Oh, I must say it's a little bit past my bedtime. Well, then you must be an early riser. I hear you put in a 16-hour day. Sorry. I think that's a lot of work to be done. The early bird Something's early going on with Redmond. It costs a great many things. Doesn't though. surprise me. The few Thank words you. I have for his breed can only be written on bathroom walls, which I would gladly do if I had a bathroom of my own. Mm -hmm. I suppose I could best be called a populist. Uh, I don't think the present government is responsible to the desires of the people to the wishes of the people so, and I want to do something. Weird. Weird. They're all weird, every one of them. This show's on live, isn't it? Yeah. Why? 
Well, that's what's weird. Julie left a message. She said she and Redmond were going up to the lake. Well, maybe they had a change in plans and gone up after the show. Oh, yeah, probably. How about some gin? You want to lose again? Oh, big talker. I'll cut. At the state capitol, the governor has signed into law the much-debated environmental impact bill. Conservative estimates indicate it will be two to three years. Yes. The new law will have significant effect on pollution in the state. Otherwise, you can... Sorry, honey, I get the bathroom. Let me see that coin. Oh. In the afternoon. Now, more on the death of Julie Redmond, wife of U.S. Senate candidate Will Redmond. At Lake Pachuma, the sheriff's office is completing their investigation into the accidental death of Mrs. Redmond, who ran off Old Lake Road and plunged into the water late last night. She was alone in her car when the fatal accident occurred. On the... Oh, my God. Sweetheart, accidents happen. But I just saw her. She left a message on the, on the machine. She said she and Will were going up to the lake. Wait a minute, honey. According to the radio, she went up alone. Something's wrong. What's the matter? What's on your mind? We better go up there. All right, uh, come over here and get the shot of the rear end now. Sheriff? Sheriff, we'd like to talk to you about Mrs. Redmond's accident. No, no, no questions now. I'm busy. You can, you can see that. Uh, yeah, very efficient. Actually, my name is Richard Harding Davis. I'm with Persons Magazine. We're doing a human interest profile. Right. On how a local sheriff handles such an important case. Now, we don't want to take you away from your work, but this is for next month's issue. Perhaps you could give us some background information. Well, Petuma is a small town. There's a lot of things happen here, and when they do, well, I take care of them, just like I have for the last 16 years. Are you the photographer? Uh, Sheriff, the photographer will be here this afternoon. Just finishing an important assignment on the Rockefeller family. It's better get my shirt pressed. Sheriff, has anyone touched this car since you hauled it out of the lake? No, sir, not since we removed the body. What was the time of death? 11.45. Wristwatch was smashed. It was easy to tell. 11.45. Was Mrs. Redmond driving without lights? Huh? Well, the light switch is off. Well, uh... I mean, uh, so many people, uh, and, uh... You did uh, examine the car. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Was there anything wrong with the brakes or the steering? No, ma'am, nothing wrong with the car, just that bad curve up there. Uh, Willard, get over here and get a close-up of this dashboard. Harry, she's been driving up here for years. There wasn't any bad curve. I'm <sighs> sweet, honey. Just can't be sure. I'm sure. Here we go. Tacos and beer. Ah, the finest lunch mankind has ever concocted. No, thanks. I don't have any appetite. Is it Julie? Hmm. Oh. Good kid. Tough life, huh? Oh, boy. Mother died when she was a child. Father deserted her when she was 16. Remember the father. Ames? Yeah. <laughs> Alan Ames. What a deadbeat. You know, he tried to work a con on me once. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear from him? No, no, not for years. What's this? Oh, just some old letters of Julie's. I snitched this from Will's office. This is the first letter I've ever written on a congressman's official stationery. You know, if she'd divorced Redmond, it would have ruined his political career. Oh, these days, honey, anything goes. Davis says he may not run. Oh? Hmm. Well, if he doesn't, then what I'm thinking is wrong. Julie told me something the last time I saw her. She said that Redmond was a fraud. That he'd do anything to win, anything at all. <laughs> Politicians. He's spending an awful lot of money on his campaign, more than any of his opponents. Where do you suppose he's getting that money from? You want old dad to find out? No, no, I think I'll do it. I can nose around a little. Legally, please? Sure. How about it? Did he make up his mind? Is he going to run? I can't answer that. Now. What, what is he going to do, Mr. Come Scott? on, boys. When, give me a break. Have a little patience. Huh? 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 Will. Do you have a statement? Yes, I do. Gentlemen, in spite of my recent tragedy, I have decided to return to the race. 
When will you be resuming your campaign, Mr. Congressman? Intend to resume the campaign. Hi, Bryce. Are you going to be taking any time off at all? I'd like to join the campaign if I could. Great. There must be something I can do. Hey, we're always looking for endorsements. Lack of response in our good. leaders to the voice of the people. I found him. What's up, Harry? Ah. Uh, Murph, you're my man. I need you. I am thinking of entering the political arena. Harry, I'm all yours. No, no, not you, man. Your lady. Which one? Oh, Murph. How many ladies have you got? <laughs> She does still work for that millionaire, Krebs. Work for him? Norma is his local operation. He's never here. He's always in Europe. He has uh, far-flung interests. Hmm. Does he still have a few politicians on the street? Harry, he's got more strings than the Los Angeles Philharmonic. <laughs> Good. I want to know everything there is to know about Harmon Krebs. My personal wish is to retire from public life. But someone asked me, what would my wife want? I could not avoid that question. I know what she would want. Son, can you My tell me where Mr. Colby is in? As much to her as it did to me. I know what she would want. I will return to the campaign. Your name's Colby? Yes, my name's Colby. You the manager of that boy? Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you. And him. I'm, I'm sorry, we're rather rushed. Now, hold on, son. I'm talking about money. Good old U.S. dollars. Look, I think maybe you. Cripps. The name is Harmon Cripps. I need all of you with me. I know the name, sir. Son, the cotton in your suit comes from my backyard. And when we win, we will win together. Now, understand, I'm talking about six fingers. That's very generous, Mr. Cripps. But that kind of contribution is illegal. Well, there are ways, son. There are ways. Well, that's very generous. I'm afraid the answer is no. Well, I never force my money on anybody. I want to wish you good luck. If you change your mind, you can get in touch with me at my local office. I got them all over. Nice to meet you, Mr. Cripps. Nice to meet you. Take care, yeah. So that's Harmon Cripps, the Cotton King. It's funny. I thought he was a much older man. Check into him, will you? Find out what he's really all about. His name is Alan Ames. You got that? I know my own name, don't I? <laughs> Twelve years ago, you walked out, vanished. Nobody's seen you, heard from you since. I could be dead. Let's hope so. God rest your soul. Well, what kind of a guy was I? Well, not without charm. You almost caught me out of a hundred bucks once. Not without charm, huh? I like that. Hey, time to check with Norma. Yeah, right. Harry? I got it. Uh, how's it look? Let's see. Oh, look at that. The watermark and all. Perfect. Did you get the handwriting, lady? She's warming your fingers up in the bullpen. Right, thanks, honey. Well, you were right. Colby called Cripps for an appointment. <laughs> Good. Did he leave a number? Yep. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to give Mr. Colby yeah. a call. Meantime, Murph, I want you to treat Norma to a long and leisurely lunch. Wine her and dine her. Hurry with this, I could wine and dine her for a week. All I'll need is an hour. You got it. Margo! How you set up? Uh, just fine. But I'm not too thrilled with your choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> Get your new threads on and we'll go while I call. Right. You usually have my lunch sent up. Not today. Today we celebrate. Celebrate what? I, uh... I got a new job. Oh, Murph, you haven't worked in years. Is that any way to talk to your lover? You haven't done much of that in years, either. Excuse me. Excuse me. I haven't done what in years?
Redmond Campaign Committee. I have an appointment with Mr. Cripps. Oh, I'm sorry. He's on a call. Won't you be seated? Miss? Yes. How long have you worked for Mr. Cripps? Forever. Norma, I'd like you to check these over. Well, Mr. Colby, nice to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Cripps. Yeah, come on, come on inside. We really appreciate this contribution, Mrs. Roberts. One of our people will be in touch with you. Thank you very much. Well, let me tell you something. When you say you'll help, you really help. These are great endorsements here. We thought they'd look good on the handouts we're printing up. That's a good idea. Thank you. Feather. My child, it's been so long. Murphy! It would help a great deal if you would keep your trunk shut. You look wonderful, my dear. Son. It is sad that we have to meet on such an occasion. I'm sorry, sir. I don't think I know you. I'm Alan Ames, Julie's father. What is going on? Ask your dear father. I shall. there. He's really Julie's father? Uh, yes. Uh, uh. Will Newsweek's on the line. They want Later. Telling me what's going on? Not at all. How about some coffee? Harry? Sweetheart, cool down. Redmond is everything you say he is. Murphy showed him some phony letters, some incriminating letters. And he asked Redmond for 50,000 bucks. And? Well, it looks like our congressman is willing to pay. Oh, so that's why he went to see Lassiter. Lassiter? Philip Lassiter? He's the secret backer. Wait a minute. How did you find out about Lassiter? I followed him. You followed You son of a gun. Well, there's nothing illegal about following. <laughs> Bye. How'd you take it, Harry? Not bad. Really? I thought she'd have your head. I thought she would, too, until she found out that Philip Lassiter is involved. Lassiter? Are we dealing with that low life? What do you know about him? Oh, only what everybody knows about him. He's got a lot of friends in Washington, a lot of enemies at Oakdale Tennis Club. What's the matter? Is he a bad loser? No, he's a good cheater. Okay, Murph, get on the phone and find out everything you can about him. All right. Oh, Michael. Yeah. How's your backhand, Michael? Got your feet a little too far apart. What? 
<clears throat> you want to kind of get up on your toes when you serve the ball. You get a much better whack at it. You understand? Who are you? Oh, I'm the Stuart Caldwell, Mr. Cripps' tennis pro. Caldwell, get yourself over here. I ain't paying you to jabber. Mr. Cripps. Oh, Mr. Cripps, this is Mr. Harmon Cripps to Mr. Uh... Lasseter. Mr. Lasseter, Mr. Cripps. Well, I'm very happy to meet you, sir. I Pleasure apologize for my man interfering with the game. That's quite all right. <laughs> Lasseter? Now, that wouldn't be Philip Lasseter, would it? Sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a funny thing, my running into you. Why is that? I was thinking of getting in touch with you. Need a small loan, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Need a small... Uh, well, not quite, Mr. Lasseter, not yet. No, it, it's something else, actually. Uh, Caldwell, would you mind? Yes, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Lasseter. Yeah. Mr. Lasseter, mm -hmm. and, uh, that young fellow running for the Senate, uh, the Redmond boy, I've been thinking of investing a little money behind him. Got any advice for me? I wouldn't give him a nickel. He's a chief do-gooder. You don't favor do-gooders, do you, Mr. Cripps? Well, now, that depends who the do-gooding is for. <laughs> Come on, Lasseter. There were men of the world you can level with me. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, now, I've been doing a little checking. Rumor is that you're back in Redmond to the eyeballs. See, the problem I got is with this other little rumor. Redmond was having trouble with his lady before she died. Now, some hot, nosy reporter gets a hold of that. Pretty boy is going to be back practicing law in some hick town. Not that I got anything against hick towns, you understand? I'm sorry, I can't help you. Well, that's pretty, Mr. Dyson. Enjoy your game, here. Yeah? Serve him up! Will, we've cleared half an hour. Statewide hookup on every major TV channel. They want half the money up front. No problem. Good. Listen, Tuesday's going to be a rough schedule. We've got to... It's your private line. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. It's Lassiter. Hello, Mr. Lassiter. Mr. Lassiter, I don't... I don't understand. Bailed out. <laughs> oh, you love it and you know it. <clears throat> Cripps Enterprises. Mr. Colby. No, Mr. Cripps isn't in. Uh, Miss Colby. Edward Chandler here. Mr. Cripps' assistant. May I be of service, sir? Murphy! Murphy, hey, boy, sit down. Be with you in a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Where were we? Dinner this evening. Fine. May I suggest a Michael Saloon, 8 p.m.? Yes, sir, I will tell Mr. Cripsler. Thank you. Bye. Yes, Mr. Plutnikov, we have a table for you at 8 o'clock. Yes, of course, it will be a pleasure to see you. A tout à l'heure. Yes, I'm sure he will be here momentarily. He's all... Ah, Monsieur Cripps, voilà. Redmond, I'm sorry I'm late. Quite all right, Mr. Cripps. I just got here myself. Je suis vraiment enchanté de vous avoir dans mon restaurant, Monsieur Cripps. Ah, que mon vieux, c'est mon plaisir, je reste assuré. Ah, non, c'est un bon le plaisir, Monsieur Cripps. Whatever. Monsieur Cripps, votre table préférée? Merci, Michael, merci. Et Monsieur Congressman, assez, vous s'il plaît. Thank you. Uh, usual. Let's try the 28. Tout de suite, monsieur. The stunning wine, one of my two vices. What's the other one? Well, in a word, Mr. Redmond, power. Mr. Cripps, I don't consider power a vice. Oh. Well, I believe I'm beginning to take a liking to you. Well, that's good. Now then, how much do you need? 100, 200? Quarter of a million. You got it. And it's clean money. That'll be our little secret. All right. Now that you know what I need, what do you need? Well, Congressman, I've always believed with others in a clean environment. Only not so clean that it's going to interfere with progress. Clean air is lovely. But there's land's got to be mined. Factories got to be built. Is my meaning clear? Now, there's only one other little thing. 
right now. You're ahead in the polls. I want you to stay that way. No surprises come down the road. There is nothing to worry about. I beg your pardon, Mr. Cripps. There is a telephone call for you. Michael, how many times have I told you never to bother me with telephone calls while I'm entertaining here? Oh, je m'excuse, Monsieur. Je regarde infiniment. It is from Moscow. Moscow? All right. I'm sorry, Congressman. You uh, don't happen to speak any Russian, do you? No, no, I don't. Yeah, I just don't want you laughing at my accent here while I'm talking. Besides, it's a little confidential. Cripsy Shiki. Da. Da. No zdravi poroshko. Yet. Yet, yet. September. September. Panoshimo. No gradsko fayo. No ze gronie te. Da. Bozhish Katarina, da. Well, I got a little emergency here, Congressman. I'm going to have to take off. We'll talk later. Mr. Kirk, hmm? the money. Oh, yeah. Well, how about tomorrow? If, if that's not too soon for you. Oh, no, that's fine. Good. Now, I want you to stay right here and have a good dinner. They got catfish on the menu. Of course, they French it up a little, but you order it. You'll like it. It's good. Thank you. And that makes 32 precincts. Brother, I want to tell you something. Having you here, it's meant so much to me. Well, I think Julie would have wanted it that way. Yeah. Feather? Little Feather. It's me, Mr. Ames. Don't, don't you recognize Julie's daddy? That's not why I came here, no. Uh, I might poor Julie. And I wish we'd had a better relationship. Well, we'll get together and we'll talk about it, all right? Right, right. So long, Senator. <laughs> One of these days, you'll be president. Feather? That was Julie's father. Yes. You said the impossible. I know what I said. Why? That man tried to blackmail me. $50,000 for some phony letters. Which you were prepared to pay. No. I was stalling. I expected something like this. I don't believe you. I don't believe Julie was killed in an accident either. Feather, really. And I'm going to prove it. Don't do anything foolish, Feather. You'll only hurt yourself. Is there any way I can get hold? Secretary says he's out of town. That's exactly what she's supposed to say when I don't want to be disturbed. May I talk to you privately, sir? Some problem? Yeah, I'll cut right to it, Mr. Redmond. I cannot afford to back a candidate who is not 100% clean. Now, he may get a little dirty later on, but in the meantime... What are you talking about? There's a little lady around town. Lawyer lady named Tony Danton. I got word she claims that you are about to take a fall. How do you know about her? Well, now, son, there's nothing I don't know. For instance, I know that old Phil Lasseter used to be your money man. But he dropped out for some reason. All right. About this Tony Danton. She was a friend of my wife's, and my wife's death did something to her. 
She even came up with this phony father and had some letters forged that said my wife and I were estranged. None of that is true. But I heard something else. Something worse, something incriminating. Now, boy, she's about ready to spring like a bobcat stalking a possum. That is preposterous. All she has to do, Redmond, is make charges. Then there is a hearing and an investigation. By the time that's done, the primary's over and you are cooked goose. Now, I do have one little guide in principle. Never back a loser. Mr. Cripps, I assure you... Clear it up you... with this Danton lady and I'll give you all you need. But you better work fast, because I'm flying to Moscow in a couple of days. Be in touch. accusations. I could have you disbarred. Go ahead. Do you really think I would murder my wife? I'm a lawyer. I believe in evidence. What evidence? Was Julie in the habit of driving her car at night with the lights off? Because that's the way they found it. The lights switched off. to go to the police. I'm afraid they'd find my evidence a little flimsy. <laughs> flimsy? It's non-existent. Maybe so. That's why I've decided to go to the newspapers instead. They may not be able to send you to jail, but they'll be able to put enough doubt in people's minds that you won't be nominated for anything. It may not be much, but I'll take it. Julie was the only woman I ever loved. Please. My election to the Senate meant as much to her as it did to me. She wanted a divorce. I'll testify to that. All right. All right, that's enough. All right. It's true, she did want a divorce. But Feather, it was all part of her illness. She drove into the lake. She killed herself. I don't believe that. She tried before. I can prove it. You knew Julie. Had you ever seen her the way she was? Go on. She took pills. Mrs. Bauman, our housekeeper there, found her, knew what to do, and saved her. Will Mrs. Bauman verify that? Yes, she will. All right, let's give her a call. There's no phone up there. It was our hideaway. Father, come up to Lake Pachuma with me right now. All right, Will. That'll be good. I just have to call my office. Yes. Barbershop. Jesse, this is Feather. I'll get onto that Jeffries case a little later on today. I should be back in a few hours. Right. That was Feather. She said something about a, a Jeffries case. I'd better find Harry. 
Yeah, Lou, wait a minute. What, what about... Uh... Take care of it. by now. Harry, did it ever occur to you that maybe he's not El Rongo? Uh -uh, Murph, never crossed my mind. Maybe I'd better call Feather and see what's going on. Oh, what? Feather called. She said to tell you something about a Jeffrey's case. Jeffrey's case? Jeffrey's? Uh, she said she'd be back in a few hours. You are Jeffrey, Sheriff Jeffreys. A true one. My God, Lone Redmond slipped away. Where? Redmond got away. Get in, though. Oh, come with us. Persons Magazine? Yeah, I'm uh, still waiting for that photographer. Uh, listen, Sheriff, how would you like to crack the biggest case of your career? Mm -hmm. No, I I'm really serious, Sheriff. Oh, sure. There is no Mrs. Bauman, is there? Very soon, there'll be no Miss Stanton. You know, people know I've been investigating you. It wouldn't be good to find my body here where your, where your wife was killed. Now, that really would be stupid, wouldn't it? No one's going to find you here, Feather. You see that cement? You're going to become a permanent missing person. Also an eternal feature of my little hideaway here. Do you remember that telephone call I made about the Jeffries case? Well, Jeffries is the name of the local sheriff. And if I turn around, he's going to be standing there taking all of this in, isn't he? Well, it's about time you got here. Feather, you always had a lot of style. Drop it right now, mister. Yeah. <laughs> well, Congressman, I guess you're going to have to cancel your suite at the Watergate. Oh. He's in the back, playing gin. He talked about getting a steak together to get his own apartment. Hey, Harry, how'd you do? Harry. 863 grievances. Well, I guess you've got enough to move out now, huh? Yeah. Of course, first I have to pay Lou. Two years worth of haircuts. Oh, then there's the white suit and the shoes. Oh, yes, Michael. Must take care of you. Harry. That's for last year. Harry, there were a few additional expenses. Well, that's all right. I still have enough. To pay for this year's. Looks like you won't be moving out after all. Well, I suppose I'd be awfully lonely. My own apartment, taking a shower without three pairs of pantyhose to keep me company. 